first place I'd like to start uh, is just uh, update context nationally. Uh, we're at uh, 213,000 cases nationally, 80 over close to 85,000 of those are in the state of New York. Uh, total U.S. deaths have passed uh, 4,500. Uh, New York, uh, 2,373. Uh, again, I, I start with this because uh, <clears throat> there appears to be some people that feel like uh, when it was in China, that was so far away, it would never happen here. When it was in Europe, it would never happen here. And now there are still some people that believe because it's happening in Louisiana and Washington and uh, th not just New York, but all the surrounding states around here, that somehow it can't happen here, but we, the preparation that we're doing and the mandates and orders we put in place uh, are exactly that because the virus doesn't discriminate by geography. It doesn't discriminate uh, in any way in terms of uh, uh, humans. And so everybody's susceptible to this. We know that it's more susceptible to people that are elder and with underlying health disease in terms of susceptibility to having this be a fatal disease. Uh, but again, uh, we, we want to launch off by asking that everyone uh, acknowledge and understand uh, the orders that we've put in place. And we're super grateful for all the people that are, for, that are following uh, those, those orders. Uh, today, the North Dakota Department of Health confirmed uh, 12 additional cases of the novel coronavirus disease or COVID-19. Our total for the state now stands at 159 positive uh, cases. As we shared yesterday at this briefing, we're moving from sharing uh, case data twice a day to once a day. And so this uh, today's reporting of 12 only uh, is from a very short period. Uh, that's from uh, approximately 3 p.m. yesterday when we consolidated the numbers reported that we reported yesterday here at the briefing at 4. And then this includes 12 cases between 3 p.m. and midnight last night. So on a cases per hour uh, basis uh, that, uh, you know, is on a pace uh, that similar to what we've seen on our, our most number of positives per day. Tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock, we'll be reporting a full 24-hour period again as opposed to a nine-hour period. So we would expect that tomorrow uh, we'll have a higher number than we had, uh, had today. <clears throat> When we take a look at that curve again, uh, even when with that short uh, reporting period, you can see uh, that the growth in that curve continues to climb up. Uh, and as I said at the opening, uh, there are no states in the U.S. where the curve is declining and our growth rate is lagging. We're, you know, two to three or maybe even four weeks, depending on how we flatten the curve behind other states. And so we're uh, still in the beginning stages of of the work that we're doing to try to slow uh, this uh, slow this spread. <clears throat> uh, in terms of uh, what are we doing to slow the spread, it's the same things that we've talked about before, which is uh, about you know when we talk about North Dakota Smart, uh, which is stay home, stay healthy, and stay connected. And again, lots of uh, lots of advice out there to follow, but keep hearing uh, from calls that we're having. Uh, we had on a, you know, mayor calls again today, calls with health officials today, uh, calls with business community today. We continue to hear where some people are taking this very seriously and others yet not. And so again, this is appeal to all North Dakotans uh, who love liberty and freedom, which I think is everybody in our state uh, to continue uh, to maintain uh, your, to maintain that liberty and freedom. It's very important that we exercise individual responsibility and by acting uh, in following these guidelines, you, uh, you know, are literally are saving lives. Uh, the <clears throat> one thing that we did today in uh, Bismarck today on April 2nd was we uh, ordered up a pretty good blizzard today. Uh, this was after things started to clear, and you can see the capital again on this slide. But I just wanted to report uh, to for others around the country that we've done a great job, at least on the outdoor social distancing. We've seen no violations of more than two people within six feet outside anywhere on the capital grounds today uh, because we haven't seen anybody outside. And if schools were still operating, there probably wouldn't have been a snow 
Day in Bismarck today. Uh, so I, I'm sure there was maybe some uh, kids disappointed they didn't get a snow day today because they had to keep working on their, their distance learning. Uh, but for those uh, uh, snowbirds that are out there that are returning back uh, outside the uh, window of my office today, I did count over 50 robins uh, in a tree uh, that were first robins that I've seen of the year. And they're probably wondering uh, why they didn't stay further south uh, like other snowbirds. So we did have, a, we did see a flock of snowbirds arriving uh, today and they, they were not practicing social distancing. They were all huddled together in that same tree, all those robins. Uh, we want to, we've heard there's a lot of stuff going on social media. We've asked people to uh, be very clear about, particularly with information related to the virus, to make sure that they're getting good information. One of those, some of those calls are, are based on uh, trying to suggest that the data that we have in North Dakota would indicate that we're somehow putting our neighboring states at risk uh, or that we're not uh, being responsible by having more government mandated uh, action. Uh, and, and so we just want to run through a few numbers. And the first of all is it'd be good for people to understand what our positive percent rate is. This is the percentage of new cases that come in that test positive out of the tests that we're taking today. 12 new cases out of 353 tests. And when I say today, this was just in a, in a uh, little less than a nine hour period from yesterday between 3 p.m. and midnight. That if we go back and we take a look at our our rate for the uh, entire time, the 159 positives out of nearly 5,000 tests, that's a positive rate of 3.2%. We're tied for the fourth lowest of all the 50 states. Uh, the only states with a lower rate are uh, Hawaii, New Mexico, Alaska. Uh, we're tied with South Dakota and Vermont at 3.2, and Minnesota's rate slightly higher than us at 3.2, at uh, or 3.3%, 3 .3 slightly higher. But we're among the best states, when I mean, saying best, meaning in terms of uh, we have a low percentage of positives relative tests. What does that mean? Does it mean that, does it necessarily mean that we've got less of a spread or does it mean we're doing a better job of testing? Part of the answer is it means we're doing a better job of testing. And we'll take a look at that next, uh, where, where we've completed uh, 5.9 tests per thousand population, and that's similar to other proactive states that are with high testing and low positives. Utah would be ahead of us, New Mexico at 6.3, Hawaii at 6.3. So again, we're in the top 10, and with the plans that we got in place, we want to stay in the top 10 and keep moving up towards number one in terms of really doing a great job uh, on testing. So again, success here depends on slowing the spread of the virus, and, uh, and if somebody is saying, you know, oh, North Dakota's got more tests per capita than Minnesota. Well, we've done almost twice as many tests uh, per capita uh, as Minnesota. So, of course, we're going to have more positives per capita because we're doing more testing per capita. Uh, but again, uh, key here is for everybody uh, following the rules about keeping physical distance is the, the, the number one thing we want to spread or stop, stop doing. And on that, it was you know mentioned to me today on one of the calls that in some of our smaller communities or counties where there is where there's no positives reported uh, yet doesn't mean that the virus isn't there. And if somebody thinks that going to the Senex and having coffee with nine people uh, sitting closely together with your old crowd and, and they have less than 10, then you're following the rules. No, it's less than 10 people and everybody that's there is more than six feet apart. Uh, or if you're having coffee at the Senex and then you head over to the elevator and talk to a different group of, of eight or nine people, uh, again, you, you could be in a position where you're, you're a spreader and may not even know it because, again, you can be asymptomatic, having meaning no symptoms and spread it. So again, even in our communities where you may think it hasn't reached you yet, please act as if it's already there because the, the data on the testing is at least 10 days behind and also underreports the number of positives. The... Uh, Next thing we want to talk about, next topic, is the uh, uh, COVID-19 Community and Nonprofit Response Fund. Uh, we know that many North Dakotans are looking for ways to help fellow North Dakotans during this crisis. And uh, the best way to do that, of course, is to donate to some local organization that you're already familiar with. Uh, for example, a, whether it's a local senior citizen center, your local food pantry, uh, your local medical providers, uh, you know, you know them, you trust them, you know who they are, and you can donate directly. However, if either they're not able to accept donations or if you prefer, uh, we've got an 
opportunity to uh, contribute statewide to the North Dakota COVID-19 Community and Nonprofit Response Fund, uh, which will be hosted by the North Dakota Community Foundation, another highly trusted and well-known uh, organization. A link to this fund is available on our ndresponse.gov website, or you can go directly to their website, which is at ndcf.net. A little more on the North Dakota Community Foundation. It's a 501c3 nonprofit established in 1976. Uh, they're very experienced in managing disaster relief funds. Um, many would know uh, that way back in 1997 that Governor Ed Schaefer asked uh, the North Dakota Community Fund to manage private donations that came in for the uh, huge floods that, uh, that devastated uh, Grand Forks. And in 2011, Governor Jack Dalrymple asked them to manage the private donations for the statewide flooding that occurred in my not in other places in those. Today, uh, we're going to hear some brief comments from Kevin Dorak, the President and CEO of North Dakota Community Foundation, who will now uh, briefly explain this process for those willing to contribute. Thank you, Kevin. Use the back of my hand. Uh, thank you, Governor. Appreciate that. Uh, as Governor Brigham said, uh, if you know of trusted local organizations in your community uh, which are responding, they should be your first priority for giving. Unfortunately, in crisis situations, there are those who try to take advantage uh, of generous people like you. So please be aware of any pop-up or unfamiliar organizations that may solicit you. Uh, the North Dakota COVID-19 Community and Nonprofit Response Fund was established last week with a lead gift of $50,000 from the North Dakota Community Foundation. If you would like to help, you may give online by following the link for monetary donations at the ndresponse.gov website or go directly to the ndcf.net website as well. You may also mail checks to the North Dakota Community Foundation at North Dakota COVID-19 Fund, P.O. Box 387, Bismarck, North Dakota, 58502. You should know that 100% your, of your gift will go to the response effort. The North Dakota Community Foundation will take no expenses from your gift. If you have questions or would like to donate other financial instruments, such as stock or mutual funds, please call our office at 701-222-8349 and we'll work you through how to, how to get that accomplished. We are already in the process of receiving grant requests from all across North Dakota, from nonprofit organizations who are helping in this event. The need is great. We will make our first grants from the fund by mid-April. Uh, some of the, our local community foundations have already made grants in their towns to local volunteer groups who are providing supplies and food uh, to vulnerable citizens, especially elderly and shut-ins. We are in touch with other funders in North Dakota to ensure that our grants go for unmet needs and don't duplicate the giving of others. Any nonprofit organization, government entity, or volunteer group may apply. The first deadline is tonight at midnight. They can apply online uh, at ndcf.net. Assistance to individuals may be provided through our nonprofit partners, but individuals are not eligible to apply directly to from the fund. Uh, we will get through this together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. We're we're deeply grateful to the North Dakota Community Foundation for taking the lead on this fund and for their lead gift of $50,000. And we're also grateful to all the North Dakotans who we know uh, have got generous hearts and are willing to help contribute to their fellow North Dakotans. We also know that there are many organization businesses that have been interested in donating uh, personal protective equipment, or PPE, a new acronym we've all learned, uh, to help ensure that our healthcare workers and first responders are protected as they respond to COVID-19 within our North Dakota communities. Uh, supplies can be dropped off at the North Dakota Department of Transportation's district locations in Bismarck, Devils Lake, Dickinson, Fargo, Grand Forks, Minot, Valley City, and Williston. And drop-off times are Tuesday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Donated goods will be consolidated in Bismarck, managed by volunteer organizations, and distributed in coordination with the North Dakota Department of Health. So it's another way of saying if you drop off uh, PPE at any of those locations, uh, we'll get them into the North Dakota medical cash and we'll know how to prioritize to get them out to the, uh, to the local uh, local workers that need them. Uh, donate, donate items should be unused in the original 
packaging and commercially produced. We're not accepting any homemade medical uh, supplies or PPE at this time. And items that can be donated include N95 masks, surgical masks, isolation gowns, face masks, hand sanitizer, alcohol wipes, thermometers, a full list of items that can be donated to support our medical efforts uh, can be found at ndresponse.gov. Another example of our whole of government approach to addressing this COVID-19 crisis, the North Dakota Department of Transportation team members worked with the North Dakota Department of Health this week to deliver hospital supplies around the state. As you may know, we've got a, had even prior to this uh, emergency, had a medical cache uh, that had been built up for exactly this kind of situation. It had, was uh, loaded with a lot of material, including over a million, one million uh, N95 masks. Uh, about 40% of that has been distributed of the, of the medical cache out to the 49 hospitals across North Dakota. And this last week, the DOT provided uh, six drivers uh, uh, and equipment to help haul that across the state. So as the director of DOT, Bill Panos, has said this mission is vital for the state to provide the best care for its residents and we want every hospital to have the supplies on hand to be prepared to deal with the effects of this global pandemic. The deliveries began on Monday, March 30th. They'll continue to be made daily till supplies are distributed. As we rebuild the cash uh, and as needs arise, we'll continue to do that. Uh, next topic. Uh, we know people are stressed and during stress times they're, they feel vulnerable uh, and desperate in some cases makes them more vulnerable to scammers looking to take advantage of this difficult situation. Uh, we're fortunate uh, here to have with us today uh, Attorney General Wayne Stengem. Uh, consumer protection is one of the, the many uh, important areas that our Attorney General uh, leads and takes, uh, takes great care in looking at. He's been a great partner uh, throughout uh, this uh, pandemic work and he's here to talk uh, specifically uh, about uh, what, what we're doing as a state and what his team is doing to help protect uh, consumers uh, during this time of vulnerability. Attorney General, welcome. Thank you very much, Governor. And please let me start by doing something you do just about every day, which is to thank everybody for all of the work that they're doing, the thousands of North Dakotans who are doing exactly what they are being asked to do, the things they should do, that they're joining together to help their friends, families, and neighbors. All of our first responders, our law enforcement, people in state government who are working all around the clock to help with this problem. But I'm not here to talk about them. I'm here to talk about that small slice of individuals who see this pandemic as an opportunity to make a buck. Yesterday, I issued a press release, an immediate and uh, urgent press release, because we're seeing an incredible increase in the number of uh, reports that we've been getting from citizens who are getting robocalls or personal calls claiming that they had won the publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes. North Dakotans have lost thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, what happens is they call, they tell them, here's your secret number, call us back, give us that number, and we will send you a check. When they do call, they are then told that there's a fee, an expense, some kind of a uh, sum of money that has to be paid in order to acquire your winnings in the magazine sweepstakes. They're all scams. And we have seen people have lost over $10,000 here in North Dakota, and it seems to be proliferating. Once you send money to these scam artists by a wire transfer, a credit card transaction, or any technology uh, transfer, we can't get it back. The only thing that we can do is help to get the message out, and I want to tell you why that is so very important. Just before I came down here, a woman called into our office. She had paid almost $9,450 to uh, a scam artist claiming that she had won the publisher's clearinghouse. She read in the newspaper the story that we put out saying that these were scams. She called just before she was ready to make the next installment of $3,000. So we can't get the money back, but by getting the word out, we can uh, we can assure that people don't fall further victim, and that's especially true with our vulnerable citizens who are at home, maybe alone, maybe uh, not in contact with the people they might otherwise rely on. 
It is illegal to suggest to anybody they have to pay money to collect a prize in a sweepstakes. Plain and simple, illegal. The other uh, scam that we have seen now here in North Dakota is the grandparent scam. These scams kind of mutate, just like the flu virus, like the uh, coronavirus mutates. The grandparent scam is an age-old scam where a grandchild will call up grandma, a fake grandchild, claiming that they're at the border. They've been arrested for one offense or another. They need money for a lawyer. They need money for um, bail. They need money for one purpose or another. An alert citizen of North Dakota called our office to report that he'd gotten a call from somebody claiming to be his granddaughter who had contracted coronavirus. He did exactly what we always tell people to do. He hung up. We don't know what it was that was next to be asked for, but you can be sure that he would have been told, I'm in the hospital, I need to make payment on a medical bill, and you have to send it by... Uh, by wire transfer or by credit card or by going down to the store and getting a prepaid uh, credit card. So he was alert, he was smart, he did what we said you should always do and that's hang up on those calls. The other uh, uh, scam that is going to come here to North Dakota is sweeping the nation already and that is for those people who are expecting, which is just about everybody, their $1,200 stimulus check or for $2,400 for the family. And these scams are claiming that you need to pay a fee, you need to submit certain information um, in order to get your check, or they claim that they can help speed things along. And of course, each and every one of those will ask you to pay something in order to do, to do that. None of that is happening. You do not have to pay a fee. You do not have to provide information. The check that you're entitled to will be coming in due course directly from the U.S. Treasury, deposited into your bank account, or in some instances, a check will be sent. You don't need to do anything. There's no intermediary, intermediaries, and you certainly don't have to pay anybody in advance in order to get it. The next is something that uh, I am familiar with, and that's the fake products, because I've gotten at least a couple of dozen uh, spam emails claiming that they have tests, vaccines, treatments, cures of one nature or another, and that I can uh, get that from these scam artists and that they and they alone have the treatment or the cure. I want to alert and assure everybody that you are not going to find out about the uh, existence of a cure when it arrives in a piece of spam that you get. You are going to find it from legitimate news sources. You know, there also are uh, uh, spam emails going out promising masks. I even got one for an oxygen concentrator, whatever that is. <clears throat> if you respond and click on a link, Nothing but mischief is going to happen. And if you attempt to buy something, you will at some point have to enter your credit card number and your PIN number and your expiration date and perhaps even your mother's maiden name. And then in exchange for that, you will get a inferior product or more likely you will not get anything at all. And what you will have done is given your credit card information to somebody who can use it for purchasing whatever it is these con artists want. The cure doesn't exist. There are no lotions, potions, not, no nostrums, or snake oil that exists that you can get from spam email that you are uh, sent. Ignore it, delete it, and never, ever, ever click on a link in those pieces of spam. And then finally, I just want to touch on the issue that's been brought up uh, before, and that's the charities. In America, we're very generous people, and in North Dakota, even more so. But if you're going to give, I hope you will give generously, but you also need to give wisely because there, no doubt, will be all manner of scam artists coming out trying to claim that they are a legitimate charity or that they are uh, somebody who can get money directly somewhere. Don't ever respond to somebody who calls you on the telephone asking you, for a uh, donation to a charity. What I do 
And I do this without fail, and I suggest everybody else do as well. As I tell people, I never do business with uh, donating money with anybody who calls me on the telephone. Send me something in the mail. Every legitimate charity will send you something in the mail if you ask. Accumulate what it is that you've been asked for, and then sit down with your spouse or significant other and make an intelligent decision, a wise decision, about who it is that you want to give to. Charities are suffering, and their contributions are certainly going to decline just like everybody else's. Um, and so make sure that you're giving wisely, or give directly to people that you know, that you know, it doesn't have to be through a charity, people that you know that are suffering and have difficulties, help them out. Be as generous as you possibly can, but make sure that the donations that you're giving go to places that are uh, going to actually do the kind of good that we're all talking about. You outlined one here yet today, so for those who are uh, unsure, that's a good spot to donate as well. Uh, check with the North Dakota Secretary of State, by the way, the sos.nd.gov. Every charity that solicits money is required to be registered. And so check to make sure that they are actually registered in North Dakota. So thank you for the opportunity to come and give this uh, information to assure people that, uh, that we're here and we're ready to work and do whatever we can to help. And I think I'd, uh, here, if you get a, a, a robocall or a scam call or anything asking you to do uh, donate money, especially in the publisher's clearinghouse, please call 1-800-472-2600 and we will talk you out of it and we will save you a lot of money if it's something that you're considering donating to. So thank you, Governor. Thank you very much for having me come here. Please, it is essential that we get the word out. I told you about what happened with the lady who only because she learned in the media, we saved her several thousand dollars. Who knows how many other people we could uh, similarly assist by getting the word out. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Attorney General, uh, and thank you for all the work that you and your team do to help protect North Dakota citizens. Uh, usually I'm looking at the camera and I don't get a chance to see Lindsay behind me while the Attorney General was speaking. I got a chance to uh, watch Lindsay do her great work, and my favorite part was when you were had the thing about don't do those scam things. I mean, there was a lot of like stiff arm kind of this stuff happening. It was very clear. I think I understood. I don't sign, but I understood everything she was saying. Uh, so thank you again, Lindsay. Uh, we've got another uh, uh, executive order going out today. Uh, and this uh, executive order uh, sort of dovetails or piggybacks on one from March 26th. Uh, and that was uh, one that the uh, Attorney General had also helped us on, uh, which was removing the requirement uh, that counties uh, must provide at least one physical polling place on uh, primary election day, because this gave the counties the flexibility and local control uh, to conduct their June 9th primary election by mail ballot only. 33 counties offer mail ballot voting uh, already, but th those were required, those 33 counties that did mail-in also were required to have one physical. Now they can, uh, if they opt in, uh, they can uh, they can opt in to have it not include that physical location to protect, of course, the safety and well-being of our poll workers, which include many retirees who may have greater vulnerability to COVID-19. Uh, today, we've got an executive order because a, a different one, uh, because there's a different set in century code uh, and different terms uh, talking about school board elections. And school board elections actually start even before the June 9th. Some of the school board elections start as early as April 1st yesterday and go through June 30th. And this uh, executive order today gives school boards the opportunity if they want to opt in to do mail-in only ballot so they'll be able to continue to hold those. So that executive order went out just before four o'clock today. Uh, the uh, other uh, topic, another topic we want to talk about today, which again uh, is uh, relates to uh, insurance. Uh, insurance Commissioner Godfrey was here yesterday. Uh, 
presenting, uh, but in a consumer-related issue, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of North Dakota, the largest nonprofit provider of health insurance, has announced it is supporting the COVID-19 response by waiving all out-of-pocket costs uh, for members needing inpatient or outpatient treatment for COVID-19. This is a big deal uh, from Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, and this uh, you know would include when you say all. I, I had to ask again. I said, "Hey, do they, this include their copay?" Yeah, this includes the copay. So the copay and all out-of-pocket costs, uh, needing inpatient or outpatient. They had previously announced they were waiving out-of-pocket costs for COVID-19 testing, uh, but with today's announcement, which is effective through May 31st, applies to Blue Cross Blue Shield North Dakota members on fully insured groups and on individual plans. Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield North Dakota is working with its self-funded employers to assist them in meeting the needs of their employees during the pandemic. And I just want to say again, uh, as Attorney General was talking about generous North Dakotans, this is a uh, very generous act by Blue Cross Blue Shield for removing some of the financial uh, uncertainty during this crisis. And I also want to thank Insurance Commissioner Godfried uh, for pushing for this waiver. Uh, and as encouragement to other providers hearing this announcement, uh, I'm sure that Insurance Commissioner Godfried would encourage you to do other providers to do the same thing and step up the way Blue Cross Blue Shield has. Uh, but for more information, about their expanded coverage, you can visit the Blue Cross Blue Shield at uh, bcbsnd.com slash COVID-19. Uh, next topic, you know, we have uh, put substantial uh, orders and mandates in place about closing bars, restaurants, theaters, athletic facilities, the schools are closed, uh, non-essential businesses are closed, and we've, you know, asking people to... Uh, limit their travel, you know, stay at home, stay healthy, stay connected. But everybody knows we got to shop for food. But there are people that, uh, for some people, maybe this is becoming the uh, exciting, you know, get out of the house entertainment for the whole family. Uh, and we've heard from the North Dakota Grocers Association that they would like to ask uh, North Dakotans to, uh, even though this is certainly shopping, uh, grocery shopping is necessary and encouraged, that there are some guidelines that the, uh, the North Dakota Grocers Association wants us to help get out because these businesses can remain open and keep uh, the important work they're doing as long as they've got us, they're keeping their staff uh, healthy. So whether you're a grocery store, a supermarket, a big box retailer, uh, with grocery services, we're, you know, we are hearing from all of them concerns that people aren't doing everything they can, the shoppers, to practice social distancing and protect their workers. Uh, these team members are there day in and day out. Uh, when the shelves are cleaned out during the day, people are working there all night long uh, to restock those shelves. And, of course, we know that uh, there's exposure uh, because of the concentration and number of visitors. The North Dakota Grocer Association has provided some solid guidelines. We strongly recommend everyone follow these for the health of themselves and for anybody working in these stores. Uh, again, using sanitizing stations or wipes uh, when available. Uh, again, which we tell everybody, indoors or outdoors, maintain six feet of separation between yourself and others, whether that's customers and where possible with employees. Uh, avoid social gatherings in the store. If you run into uh, neighbors and friends here, uh, the rules still apply about social distancing. Uh, many people are doing a great job on planning their shopping trip before they're going, which is you know putting together that shopping, uh, shopping list uh, to limit the time. You limit the exposure to others and you limit protect yourself and your family by spending less time in the store. Uh, and then family members, again, uh, doesn't have to be a group activity, uh, maybe a good opportunity to uh, extend responsibilities to a younger member of your family and have them go do the shopping. Uh, parents are busy parenting and being uh, helping their kids teach at home. So if you've got uh, teenagers, uh, uh, maybe this is a good time to you know ask them to uh, give them the list and have them go get this done uh, one at a time. Uh, and <clears throat> I know this isn't possible you know for families with young children, uh, but again, if you can uh, shop, uh, just send one family member to shop. That's great. Number of people are using uh, shopping for delivery or store pickup when available. Uh, have it prepared. They bring it out to your car. We appreciate all the grocers that are that are doing those things to help that. We realize that with your uh, electronic benefits transfer uh, cards or food stamp uh, snap things, they can't be used for delivery fees, but some stores do offer free grocery pickup. And again, we do appreciate those stores that are offering senior shopping hours uh, where they're limiting, uh, they're, they're open, but they're limiting to the, to the public to only those over age 65 to shop during pertinent per 
certain times. We're doing this all together to slow the spread of COVID-19, but thank you again for following these guidelines and please help keep yourselves and other fellow community members safe. Uh, as a yesterday, we had a question that came in from online uh, where we deferred it back to the individual uh, family about a uh, <clears throat> how they should manage the summer uh, uh, managing their kids in a co-parenting situation. Uh, I was made aware afterwards, we've shared this before, uh, parents, uh, probably a very challenging time to be uh, parenting right now with kids uh, home from school uh, and and all the pressures that are coming on families, but parentslead.org is a great uh, website that's supported by our behavioral health division. There's lots and lots of information out there and there's even a section on co-parenting during a pandemic. So it turns out our team already had information up on that. So again, uh, kudos to behavioral health and again, parentslead.org. If you're a parent, uh, take a minute and check it out. Uh, next topic, unemployment. Uh, <clears throat> yesterday, uh, we had another 2,806 unemployment claims filed. That brings the total over 30,000, uh, 30,047 to be specific, uh, since March uh, 16th. Uh, so that continues to climb, and I know there are other announcements today, and uh, I don't think anybody should be surprised about this going up. We've never had unemployment benefits like we have right now, and I think we're gonna see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, organizations that are going to be uh, furloughing employees and encourage them to pursue unemployment. So I, I, we should not be surprised if this number climbs at record levels, either here in North Dakota or nationally. Uh, but the good news is uh, that in many cases, the, the benefits there are, well, in, for sure in North Dakota, these are the strongest unemployment benefits ever ever been available because it's $600 a week on top of what was uh, on prior a, a very good package before. Uh, next topic, uh, we announced on uh, Tuesday our workforce uh, coordination center was activated to serve uh, help with the emergency workforce needs uh, in support of the COVID-19 because we know that we're stretched with uh, lifeline services providers, industries, and agencies. And whether you're out of work, retired, or just want to help, we ask that you thought thoughtfully consider volunteering to help during this emergency situation. We're looking for both volunteers and paid staff. And the examples uh, that have come up today, again, when we go out into rural North Dakota, uh, you know, we've got places where the uh, city auditor plus one, uh, they're the only two people that are there. I encourage them on the call to practice social distancing because anybody knows in a small town, if you lose your city auditor, which it might be also effectively your city manager and your city everything, and they're answering every question for everybody because city commissioners and mayors are part-times and their parents and have other jobs. So uh, there's a broad definition of who's essential in North Dakota, and it really varies by, uh, by community. Uh, but uh, again, uh, in this case, even if you're someone that's got an accounting background or you're willing to volunteer and answer the phone. Uh, if somebody uh, uh, had to stay home for a couple weeks and was isolated, your, your little your small town in North Dakota may need a volunteer to come and staff the phone uh, at City Hall. So if you are uh, interested in volunteering your services, whether it's in healthcare or finance, accounting, or anything you want to volunteer, go to the Workforce Coordination Center. And if you have needs, go to the Workforce uh, Coordination Center as well. I'm pleased to report uh, that in the brief time we've had this up, 330 people have already responded uh, to our call for volunteers. And I think close to half of those are people with medical backgrounds. So we're off to a good start, but we would love to see thousands of people raise their hand because we may need that kind of uh, staffing to help us get through the peak. Uh, interested employers and volunteers, contact Job Service North Dakota Workforce Center uh, at 701-328-0400 or go online to jobsnd.com slash COVID-19. Uh, last update before we go to Q&A uh, <clears throat> is uh, today uh, on a uh, briefing led by the North Dakota Department of Commerce and uh, Michelle Comer uh, with a number of other uh, elected officials from across the state and other cabinet leaders also participating in that. We, ha we had a chance to uh, present information to over 2,200 individuals uh, re representing businesses across the state. Uh, one of the big topics uh, 
on that call was uh, something that we've already covered this this uh, briefing, which is the CARES Act. But again, 350 billion for support for small businesses, 260 billion for unemployment insurance expanded benefits, 300 billion in the form of those direct payments that we talk about, where every uh, basically every man, woman, and child. Uh, in the nation uh, under the uh, income level is gonna get a check, uh, 1,200 for adults, 500 for kids. And, and then again, providing guidance on, uh, on, on, uh, on this whole thing. But today they also went deeper into the economic injury disaster loans, the paycheck protection program, expanded unemployment and the direct individual payments. Uh, <clears throat> and if you weren't able to join in on the briefing, you can view it. Uh, there was, it was a webinar, there were slides that went along with it. It's not just listening to a Call, but you can view it in its entirety under ndresponse.gov under the business employer resources section along with the presentation resources. So if you missed that today and you're an employer, uh, probably a really good idea, a great source of information there. Uh, and uh, the uh, Commerce team uh, continues to provide constant updates to its website uh, as well uh, to help you get the best information you can as an employer to make important decisions right now. The next briefing uh, from Commerce will be Thursday, April. April 9th at 11, uh, 11 a.m. Central Time, and you can also register at ndresponse.gov. Uh, with that, we'll stand for questions, but I would say tomorrow, uh, we're moving the 4 p.m. briefing tomorrow to 3.30 p.m., so we'll look forward to seeing it here, but a less, con less conflict with uh, uh, potential White House announcements, uh, which seem to be coming approximately at 4 Central Time. So 3.30 p.m. tomorrow, tune in tomorrow. And again, thanks to all the media that's here and listening online, but we'll open for questions. Dave Thompson from Prairie Public. Governor, I've been getting a few calls, especially from North Central North Dakota, people who are trying to apply for unemployment benefits and they're having some problems. They're saying they're, get, they're getting kicked off. So I'm just curious, have you heard anything about uh, technical problems to get on the site or anything like that? And uh, I'll just ask for clarification, Dave, when they're saying get kicked off, meaning they're, they're filling out the form and then all of a sudden it, it crashes. Okay, so this is a, uh, they're having problems applying online. So I have not heard that, but I will uh, we will take that. My team is here taking notes. We'll check in on that one, but thanks for that. Thanks for that feedback. Uh, and again, we are also working to try to up the staffing that's going on over there. Again, we're shared with you that we've had a year and a half worth of applications in the last uh, 16, 17 days. <clears throat> one coming in from online. April Baumgarten with the forum in Fargo-Moorhead. NDSU announced it has a presumptive case. Do you, re do you recommend any further actions to, re to prevent spread at universities and colleges? Well, whether it's a, uh, if we have a presumptive case, whether it's in a you know a business or in the anywhere in the community or at a university, it, the action is the same. Uh, someone who's presumed positive uh, should self-isolate uh, until they uh, find out that they've got an, either a positive or negative result. Uh, if they and if anybody who's had close contact with that uh, presumed positive, uh, then they should also be self-isolating until they hear whether or not the person that you're connected with uh, or have had close contact with is proved to be negative. So that's a standard practice uh, for everyone regardless of location. Thanks for the question, April. Lane? If all Americans are uh, urged to start wearing masks, um, do, does the state of North Dakota just have those N95 masks or do we also have a cache of regular masks that will work as well? Uh, the, there's a two-part question. Uh, in, in the big if on the first part, you know, if Americans are asked to wear masks, I haven't heard that that's gonna be a, a, a national order. Uh, and then the second part is, I know that we've got still remaining N95 masks. I believe we've also got what are called surgical masks, which are not uh, N95 masks. Uh, they've got l little less protection. Uh, provide, they provide some protection, but uh, we would not have enough of those uh, in a medical cache for you know, everybody in North Dakota. Uh, but again, we're, <clears throat> if you stay six feet away from everybody else, you don't need a mask. So that's uh, if you don't if you if you if you don't like wearing masks, uh, then 
keep physical distance. Uh, for medical providers that are working with people that are, are, for example, that are presumed positive, maybe positive, or have other disease, diseases, that's where we've got to make sure that, you know, for the first responders and the medical providers, we've got to right now make sure the equipment goes to them because they're not able to do their job and stay six feet away. Uh, and they're in regular contact with people that may, may possibly have COVID. So we're concentrating our resources where it can protect uh, the people the best. And for everybody else, uh, I said, you know, skip the mask and stay stay further apart. Jacob? Uh, Governor, in reference to the president, he said that he's expecting between 100,000 to almost a quarter of a million deaths related to COVID-19. Is there a number or a model your office is using anticipating for this state? Uh, there's a number of different models with, you know, high, low, medium. Uh, we're still continuing to work those models. Uh, they're between those, but if you... Uh, <clears throat> North Dakota uh, represents uh, less than a third of one percent of the of the population in the United States. So if you uh, did the uh, you know the quick quick math on that, and you took you know one third of one percent of two hundred thousand people. I think that gets you to about six hundred deaths in North Dakota, and I think we would find that unacceptable. And so we're uh, working really hard to make sure that we don't get there because those assumptions are based on the, based on that we're you know the inability to provide uh, the care that's needed for the people that are most critically ill and and so that's uh, uh, you know that's what we're working to do we want to you know slow the spread raise the line of the capability of the health crisis but I should also be clear too that during this time period uh, there there'll be I'm sure a post-mortem after we get through this uh, to say you know the people that died from COVID or the people that died with COVID? Because we have people that are, if you're at near the near end of life and have uh, multiple uh, multiple underlying health dis uh, issues that are going on, each one of those multiple health issues, which could be fatal, whether it might be cancer, or heart, or uh, lung cancer, respiratory disease, uh, any of those things that could be fatal for someone of that age, and then you throw this on top of it, it could accelerate uh, mortality. Uh, and so again, I think we have to uh, take a look at what's your underlying run rate because over a period of the next year, there will be people that die in North Dakota and and what, what's our what's our run rate going to be versus our baseline. And we may not be able to beat the baseline because people, uh, and we haven't figured out a way to, we haven't figured out the path to immortality. So there still will be uh, life, you know, birth and death as part of uh, the regular course of life in our state. But uh, what we don't want to see is a big acceleration of mortality because we didn't do everything we could to do things that were controllable in terms of managing the spread of this virus. Another question coming in from online. And of course, we still have the Attorney General here as well. If people want to toss questions his way, he's still here. Eric Arndt with KZZY in Devils Lake. Given where the numbers are today, does the state have any new projection of when North Dakota might see the peak in coronavirus cases? Uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, we, you know, we try to be looking at updating our models. We've got a big modeling meeting again tomorrow, but as we said earlier today, the uh, 12 cases reported today came from a short stub period. So uh, we're not, not updating our, our projections on peaks at this time. Lane? The uh, PPE supplies delivered to hospitals by the NDDOT, was that just to hospitals or is that also being sent out to first responders as well? Uh, I'd have to drill down on that specific uh, the briefing that I got was that it went to the 49 hospitals in North Dakota, but I know that we also uh, have been uh, through a regular purchasing uh, system, uh, have been delivering, maybe not by semi, but we've been delivering uh, to police departments and sheriff's department and first responders around the state uh, and worked on getting some of the kinks out because in some cases we were trying to make sure that the people purchasing, we made that announcement uh, a day or two ago that if you're in a county, you know, have your emergency manager there who knows how to do the purchasing for emergency managed supplies, uh, make have them do the purchase order with our emergency management team, and that's how we'll manage getting it out. But I, I believe that the semis went to hospitals only, but we still are doing deliveries to first responders and law enforcement in smaller, smaller quantities than hospitals. Dave, we talked about childcare a few a few days ago. 
and there was some concern that you're losing child care providers, you've got new rules coming in, but there's also some new federal money coming in. Have you stemmed the tide of uh, losing child care providers? And I'll preface this by saying there was a big announcement from, from, from the YWCA in Fargo this week that they're closing down their child care center. Y yes. On did we stem the tide? The answer is we believe yes. We, we had dropped uh, out of uh, over 1,600 private Li owned and operated child care providers. Some of those, of course, are nonprofits like the one you mentioned, but uh, we had lost 174 of them uh, in the couple first couple days. Since this, we're, we're, that number has gone the other way. We're back, we think we're, the number I heard today is there's only 154 that are closed, and of course, that's their choice and their option uh, to do that, but we feel we've stemmed the tide. Uh, today at the Emergency Commission uh, meeting today, uh, there was a vote to approve uh, Six million dollars in community block grant uh, capability that is coming in through human services, uh, which could be directed or will be directed towards uh, child care in our state. So that is a, a source of funding that could help support the uh, the uh, child care emergency operating grants, uh, which we announced uh, earlier. Uh, but uh, again, we feel that that action that we that was taken, you know, helped uh, at least for the moment stem the tide of those closures because it's an essential piece of infrastructure that we need uh, all the time in our state, but we absolutely positively need it to get through this crisis because we got to have child care for all of our lifeline workers. Jacob, KFYR, uh, thank you for being here again. Still got perfect attendance. Governor. Uh, this is a question for the Attorney General, actually. Uh, hey. <laughs> you mentioned uh, the generosity of North Dakotans, but you also said that charities are suffering. I wonder if you could add some context to what you mean by that. Well, everybody's income is down, and the disposable income certainly, and that is the source of money that most people have to make donations to charitable causes. And so as income goes down, the economy suffers the ability of people to make donations is depleted as well. And I'm sure that uh, any charity that you talk uh, to, and I don't want to mention Prairie Public Radio by, in particular, but uh, I'm sure that they're experiencing the same kind of thing that I'm seeing or hearing about happening uh, everywhere. The, just the donations are going to be going down because people's income is going down. We'll go online and then to Lane. Okay. Robin Travers with 660, 660 KUYZ in Williston. Uh, how can the government help to make sure voter turnout is high for elections given the new executive orders? Uh, on how can we assure uh, turnout uh, is high on these local elections, again, uh, the, the burden uh, particularly on school board elections, really is on the on the local schools, and so if they're uh, going to uh, mail in only as an opt in option that they have for a school board election, uh, that you know local newspapers, social media, all the marketing methods they do to do that, because sometimes you've got. Uh, there are school board elections that have happened in North Dakota with pretty low turnout, but uh, because it may not follow, fall on a normal election day, uh, people may not be clear on where to vote. So again, would encourage uh, encourage everyone to do that. And certainly, if you've got uh, you know students that are that you're uh, that are at home, uh, making sure that. Uh, you know, the parents of those kids who ought to have a voice in this thing, that they know that those elections are coming up. Uh, you know, property owners uh, that are paying property taxes that are supporting those schools. So I would think, you know, maybe the county tax department, uh, uh, the schools, the working through their kids. Uh, but it's possible with, you know, sometimes these uh, school board elections were held uh, in a time where maybe it wasn't convenient for working parents to to you know, get there to vote. In some cases, we've seen when you go to online online mail-in balloting, you can actually get voter turnout up versus down. So it doesn't necessarily have to uh, mean that we're going to have lower turnout. It could actually increase because it actually could make it more convenient for people, particularly during these challenging these challenging times. And if people are working from home, everybody should have time to fill out a mail-in ballot because you're saving all that time that you're not commuting every day or dropping kids off at school. So uh, would encourage all those local political subdivisions to really get the word out, particularly if they're going to mail-in ballots for the first time. It's really incumbent on them to get the word out. Lane? 
The uh, White House has urged rural areas to listen to the information because they're not invincible as well. Do you feel like North Dakota has done enough to inform these rural areas, or do you think there's more that could be done for them? I think we've still got some work to do, and I, I mean, media's been great uh, covering these, you know, these daily conferences. We're putting uh, stuff out on social media from the state, but uh, you can be the, you can be a state, any state in the nation. Right now, is doesn't match the hundreds of millions of people that are on social media every day, often spreading misinformation uh, on all range of things, uh, and it's just. Uh, uh, you know, er everything from uh, people, you know, saying that uh, this thing may not be real. There's still stuff like that floating around on social media in North Dakota, shockingly, uh, as Americans are, you know, dying every day. Uh, so it is, uh, so so there, it is, uh, again, and I've put the appeal out on all these calls, whether it's talking to bankers, whether it's talking to business leaders today, whether it's school board members, whether it's the local medical communities, community, the local hospitals, uh, everybody's got a responsibility to try to communicate to their constituents uh, the importance of this and that it, that it really matters that w by practicing uh, the guidelines that we're giving and, and uh, following the, the executive orders we've put out, we are going to, we are going to save lives. But I, I do think it's easy to, to look at a map and go say, Hey, we don't have any positives in our County. Uh, the rules don't apply to us. But again, I seem saying, I wish we had another measure uh, and maybe we will soon as we ramp up testing uh, some of the ideas that we are, planning on doing for testing that I think might help the whole country if we can get, uh, you know, federal support for this is for us to go do large scale testing in a county that has no reported positives. And if we can go into a county like that and demonstrate uh, that there are a number of positive cases that just weren't showing up or they were asymptomatic, we think that's information that could help every model in every state in the country and maybe the whole world. We think North Dakota could actually contribute to the world's knowledge uh, because uh, the majority of the testing resources are going towards the places where we're in full on outbreak, like the Washingtons and the Louisianas and the, the New York. Those are the people that have the highest number of tests per thousand. Uh, because because the federal government shoving a lot of testing resources there to try to, uh, you know, just stop, you know, slow down the the onslaught that's that's happening. There's a, a and in, and so we're, uh, but you know, we think again, if you're trying to reinforce success and educate the world, that there's a real opportunity for us to lead with some new knowledge and new information. But to do that, we've got to have uh, more testing capability than what we have right now. And we're, we had a couple of machines arrive yesterday, uh, the Abbott M2000s. These are significant, huge machines. They got National Guards over at the uh, Labor de or at the uh, Health Department helping that team over there get, uh, get them set up. Uh, and we should have those online. They, they have to get verified, could be online by this weekend, but we're doing a lot of things to increase our, our throughput. Uh, and with more data, we should be able to do a better job of educating the public, even in the rural areas, that this is super serious. Dave? Forgive me for this one. When it comes to social yeah, media... You're asking for forgiveness before I even ask the question. But when it, when it comes to social media, should we practice social distancing? Okay, well, so we'll just leave that one as a standalone Dave Thompson that you're talking about. Those are the ones that may be a quick turnaround test. No, they, Abbott ID now is the uh, the ones that can process a, a test in under 15 minutes. The M2000s are big batch machines. I think they do 94 tests at a time, but those uh, and we'd like to have those up and running. And if we've got staffing, it'd be great to have those going 24 hours a day. <laughs> Last one from me, Governor. Uh, yesterday, you extended the business closures and whatnot. Uh, with the North Dakota Grocers Association announcing new guidelines, just any consideration of expanding the types of companies that would fall under that closure in the coming days? Uh, no plans right now to expand. Uh, the closures, we would just, again, encourage uh, everybody to follow the orders we've already given and, uh, and then, again, uh, exercise individual responsibility if we if uh, again we've talked to the you know mayors uh, we know some mayors have felt like you know hey maybe they should be doing more to try to shut some things down uh, we've encouraged the mayors of, around the state to just amplify the messages we're delivering uh, we think we've got enough uh, government uh, mandates out there right now we just got to get everybody to follow them and if they can follow uh, particularly as it relates to what you know individuals are doing in terms of distance keeping and uh, you know 
know, staying healthy, staying home, staying connected, if they can do that, uh, we can maybe get through this without having to dial up uh, more uh, government interference in uh in the lives of people that would be nice if we could do that but it all depends on all depends on the state i think a great outcome would be if we were one of the states that had a little lighter touch on on the mandates but we had uh, some of the lowest and slowest spread because that would that would mean that uh, you know we're still living in a country where individual responsibility matters and as opposed to Hey, you know, mayor, won't you do it? Hey, mayor, if you won't do it, maybe the state will do it. Hey, state, if you won't do it, you know, why don't you get the federal government to do it? Uh, you know, maybe we can get the, uh, what's the, uh, I'm hearkening back to Star Wars, but the uh, supreme leader, maybe the supreme leader of the world, of the universe could put out some orders. No, come on, it all comes down to the way you stop the spread is what the choices that individual people make. You know, the spread in North Dakota is not going to be determined by what's said in Washington, D.C., and it's not even going to be determined really by what's said in North Dakota. It's going to, or in Bismarck, it's going to be determined by uh, the individual responsibility of North Dakota. And so if we can, if we can deliver on that consistently, uh, that could be a, a, a real uh, feather in North Dakota's cap. I think there must be new news coming in. Uh, the Attorney General's got a hot, hot, hot piece of news in his well, hand. No, well, the first news is I, I want to make sure I understand now that I can go home and tell my wife that I am prohibited by law from going grocery shopping with her. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> no. And of course I'm kidding. I understand and we both already understand how important it is to not congregate in the uh, grocery stores or elsewhere. Um, I just want to give an update because I mentioned this woman that had lost the $9,500 who called our office because she had heard in the media that the publisher's clearinghouse uh, scam was indeed a scam. After that, we contacted the sheriff down in Texas where she had mailed the check, and the sheriff went out to the house got the envelope with the check in it, and the lady is going to get her money back. And so th th that's why it's so critically important to get the message out, because if she hadn't read that, that story in the newspaper, she would be out $9,500. And so please help spread the word as much as you possibly can. And the other, one other thing, Jacob, I wish in the context of things I wish I had said, the North Dakota Medical Foundation, who runs the Giving Hearts program, did a survey of a number of charitable organizations in North Dakota, most of whom said that they had canceled a charitable event of one sort or another that they had planned. That's uh, some evidence. I think there's some information you can get from their website that talks about the uh, uh, some additional difficulties in, in uh, making, uh, uh, getting charitable contributions. So there was some valuable information there. Thanks again, Governor, for having me down here. I appreciate it. After that happy ending, we're gonna have to call you Paul Harvey for now for the rest of the story. <laughs> <laughs> They've recovered the recovered the check, uh, so that's fantastic. Uh, we're gonna it's a top of the hour. We're gonna close out. I uh, want to say again, thanks. Uh, another example of uh, media getting the word out, helping citizens in North Dakota. So thank you for that. Thanks for everybody that's tuning in. Uh, and again, uh, you know, key messages uh, here about North Dakota Smart means you know stay home, uh, stay healthy, stay connected. Stay connected means keeping your kids connected with their teachers. Uh, stay connected with your child care providers stay connected with your you know parents grandparents and friends and relatives because uh, we all need to look after each other with a little bit of extra patience a little extra kindness uh, during this time there is a old proverb that says don't be pushed by your problems be led by your dreams and I think that even in this time when everybody's probably feeling like we got a stack of problems uh, behind us there still is an opportunity for us to uh, have a dream about you know outcomes we've tried to outline some of those here today about how North Dakota can come through this better and stronger uh, with uh, with the you know the full resolve and the full capability that we've learned how to get through this and maybe get through it better than any other state uh, so let's keep dreaming about that and keep the communication going and again thanks to all the people and all the members of team north dakota that are doing great work uh, keeping their agencies going and serving the citizens of north dakota so thank you and uh, thanks for being here we'll see you tomorrow at 3:30 p.m and thank you attorney general mm -hmm.